the wonderful thing about a book is that it's a very collaborative pri- process. It's not, you know, you or me. It's like, well, it's better with you and me, right? So uh, um, the 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 thing that helps is understanding what the publisher is looking for and looking at that process as it relates. It's not very different from uh, the way that um, th- that you guys package deals for buyers. If you understand what the buyer is looking for in the business, then you can help to package it their way, and that makes it a smooth transaction. In today's economy, more people than ever are looking to buy and sell businesses. But how do you do it? Welcome to The Deal Board, presented by Transworld Business Advisors. Straight talk about real deals and real people. Listen to stories, interviews, and expert advice to help your business sale, merger, or acquisition process. Now, here are your business exit experts, Andy and Jessica. Everybody, welcome back to another great episode of the Deal Board Podcast. And we have a great episode today because both Jessica and I, probably about the time that we started this podcast, we put it in our minds that we also wanted to write a book. Yeah, so that's what our side project, I guess you could call it, for the last year is each of us have been working on a book um, individually. Andy's just came out. Mine's coming out in just a few short weeks. And today we really, we wanted to talk about um, our learning lessons and tips and tricks we have going through the process. It seems like, especially for business owners right now, a book is like the next level business card. And, it, and we're going to get into like the why behind why you would write a book, but it seems like, yes, everyone does have a book, but it can also be a really helpful sales and marketing tool. Yeah, it's a great tool. It's a great calling card. It's a great leave behind. And it really kind of, it forces you to put all your knowledge in one place, which I, I thought was very helpful for, for me. Now I could refer it to the book. And um, we wound up both getting professional help, which we have interviews today from both those individuals. I'm interviewing uh, Bruce Chorus that helped me uh, from B- BMD uh, Publishing and you are interviewing. I'm interviewing Kevin Dom who helped me both on the editing side, ghostwriting side and promotion side. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that professional help. But before we jump into that, we do have 10, we'll say call them learning lessons that we wanna share that we learned through the process. So the first one is actually committing to the goal of writing a book. Um, And this is a big one for me. This is my first book. I've toyed with the idea of writing this this particular book for years. Um, I've had notes everywhere. And really, I just had to set the goal and write it down and commit to a specific date that it was going to be completed by. Not just like, I want to write a book someday, right? I want to write a book. It has to be finished by the end of 2021. Yeah. And if you don't understand goal setting... (laughs) Go yeah, back right? one episode yeah. and we have a, a great goal setting and uh, episode and just listen to it as my phone rings. But um, it's a it's a great episode and it talks about committing and making goals. So that's first, right? You got to set yourself a goal. And then the second tip that we have, and I think is a great tip because, you know, I just kind of I'm second in on my this is my second book and I learned through my first book, don't worry about the structure to begin with. It's just a self-imposed obstacle that you're, you know, you're just going to have to try to get through, which really won't help you. Yeah. I mean, I think with our book, we moved around chapters and sections multiple times after they were completed. And if I had to think about this is exactly how the book was going to be structured, exactly how it was going to flow before we started writing we would have never gotten started. So I think that's a great tip. Yeah. Um, in, yeah. In fact, uh, we redid the whole book. I mean, you know, yeah. I had all these chapters and I had 24 steps and they're like, no, too many steps. So, so th- that also kind of leverages into our, our third lesson is, is there's really no one way to write a book. Um, the journey is different for every single writer and, and no style works for everybody. You just kind of start the process and find your way. Some people find it helpful to write a table of contents first and get their minds around that. Um, You know, I know a lot of writers that write the introduction last um, or some want to write it first. Some want to write in order. Others want to take it by chunk. Something I did that I found really helpful is I'm not really great um, at sitting down and writing. Like it'll take me, I'll procrastinate a lot. So what I actually did is I did audio. We do lots of audio, right? So I audioed my entire book 
and then had somebody translate that into a Word document for me. So there's not one way to write a book. You just have to figure out what works for you and what's going to motivate you to get that goal completed. Yeah, it's that's great tips. And it kind of rolls into our next tip, which is just write or speak, whatever it takes, just designate a block of time. I did get in a rhythm, right? So I did like when I started to write, I wanted, you know, three or four hours where I could just really kind of get in the rhythm. Um, I found myself having to go back and read the book and get up to the place that I left off because I found myself repeating myself sometimes, I guess with old age, you start doing that. But, you know, but even if you do that, that's okay, because you just want to get all your story out and just get it out. And the, and the book will eventually start to take shape. Yeah. I think it's important too, is like to try not to edit yourself as you're writing, right? Just like let the story flow and you can always go back. And if you did repeat yourself, you know, once, twice, five times throughout the book, you can edit that down. So, right. Yeah. So tip number five is to ignore the word count game. So whether you're self-publishing or you're going through a publisher, there might be a specific word count you're shooting for. But when you're writing the actual book, don't worry about the word count. The story is going to be more important. You can adjust the word count. And it's way easier to do that at the end of the process than while you're going through it. And it's funny, it was, I think by the time I ended up finishing our book, I was within 10% of the projected word count anyway. It just happened to be where it needed to be. Yeah, and I came up short. And it was funny because, you know, you, you, you read online, you're doing all this research. How do you write a book? How many words do I need? And, you know, there's all these kind of things. Well, this is what your book will look like if you do this. This is what your book like will, if you have 20,000 or 50,000 or or the average nonfiction book has blah, blah, blah. Ignore it. Like you said, if you get your... And we'll talk about some of the ways that you can beef up your book uh, and some of the ways that I use to beef up because I came up short and I wanted more content. I just couldn't figure out how to do that. And I got some help doing that. So we'll talk about that in a minute. But you started to talk about earlier, one of the ways to write your book is, and you should leverage technology like you did on my first book, which is called Favilla Familia, which is a book about my family's guitar uh, business that they had for a hundred years. And all that history was about to disappear. The last surviving member of our family that really worked in the business full time is getting on an age. And we talked about it openly, me and him, we're both huge fans of guitars. And so the easiest way for me to interview him was over Zoom. And I just got on a Zoom call and I recorded the whole thing. And I recorded 24 hours, not all at once, but 24 hours worth of stories and then had and then translated it. Now I translated it myself, but now there's places that'll do that for you. Yeah. I mean, you can hire someone to transcribe it for you. There's even apps. I think, I think even like Word transcribes some of it for you now. It's pretty amazing what technology can do and really what you can leverage uh, to make the most of your time when you're writing the book. So that kind of dovetails into our next lesson learned is number seven is get professional help. So Andy, you can talk about, cause you've done two books different ways. I decided that I was going to hire professional help to get the book done as business owners. We've got a lot on our plate and writing a book is, is no small task. Um, so to tackle that myself is how it sat on my plate for two, three, four years versus once I hired professional help in the form of a ghostwriter and editor and someone to help market the book, it got done within six months. Yeah, same here. I, I had the book done for the better part of two years as the pandemic hit and I was sitting in my office going down to my to-do list, actually getting a lot of my to-do list done. One of them was get your book done. And I got a tip from one of our franchisees, by the way, Steve Eschbach, as he finished his book, got introduced to Bruce, as you did. And I said, Bruce, I could use your help finishing my book. And so Bruce was very helpful, did some more interviews on my behalf. Uh, we translated, we transcribed those, um, those interviews into several more chapters, which are great chapters to support the book. And we got it done. So getting professional help is you know, really good. And, and listen, uh, you can, 
there's even in the process of writing your book, you could spin off articles. If you recorded it on Zoom, you could use it for social media posts. I mean, there's a lot of things you can do if you have the professional help that knows how to leverage everything. Yeah, that's totally right. And I guess the other way you can get professional help too, and there's there's multiple ways to tackle the, the book publishing side. So a lot of people have heard you can self-publish, which is you know printing it on your own and, and distributing it on your own. We're going to talk a little bit about Amazon and marketing your book too. Um, you can also do um, go through a, 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 a traditional publisher. I'm looking for the word, which is what I ended up doing. I ended up partnering with Skyhorse Publishing, which is a very different process. And then there's even um, hybrid models now with companies like Scribe and Forbes and things like that. So there's a lot of options. And I think you just have to evaluate what your use for the book is going to be and what's going to best suit you. Yeah. My tip is if you're going to do it and you're going to self-publish it, Amazon uh, Kindle is the way to go. And I've done my two of my books, obviously. And the first one I self-published where I had an editor uh, help me edit it. And he also was a graphic arts person. So he laid it out for me. We did an unusual shape. It's actually, if you're looking, watching us on video, it's over my shoulder. It's a square shaped book, which actually turned out to be the wrong thing to do. We put some color pictures in there, which is also a very expensive thing to do, but we didn't care. That's what we wanted for that book. And we printed it ourselves, which was quite expensive. If you don't get huge quantities, I think it turned out to be almost 15 to $20 a book, which is very expensive. And on and it's for sale on Amazon at $31, as opposed to our new book, which, you know, since I got professional help to put it on Kindle, they know the game, they know how to keep uh, the costs down, they know how to make the interior black and white and the exterior color and, and what size to make it. And now if I want to, and now they didn't have author copies back in the day when I first did my other book, now they have author copies. My, my author copies are $3 a piece. So that's, you know, pretty inexpensive to go out there and then use the book as a calling card if that's what you want to do. Yeah. So, that, so that's like kind of our eighth tip is, is definitely use Amazon, use Amazon's Kindle's direct publishing site, which is what Andy's talking about. Yes. Um, if you're going to go the self-publishing route, but no matter which publishing route you go, our tip number nine is you need to market the book. So you can't just let it sit on your desk. You should, again, this is going back to professional help, um, getting some outside help to get it out there. Yes, it's a calling card, but it also can be a marketing funnel. So at the end of this intro, Andy and I are both going to give you the information on where we can get our books. You know, we've guested on other podcasts that are going where we'll talk about our book sales as well and try and have that launch. And then you have your internal email list. You already have your fan base. Make sure you get the word out and make sure that everyone knows that this book is launching and that it's a resource available for them. Yeah. When you launch the book, one of the games is to try to become a bestseller, right? And so you could put a bestseller badge on your book. And, and the way to do that is to leverage and market to your, to your local fan base and the people that, you know, want to support you. And so that's what we did uh, through Bruce and uh, Bruce did a great job for us. And we got it on the bestseller list that day on Kindle. And, you know, now you can run around and say it's a, it's a bestseller, but you know, again, to get it out there, you do have to hire someone else. It, it, it's really a tough thing to do. I talked to someone last night that is going through a cancer journey and they're writing a non a nonfiction book about their journey. It's it's a really tough story and he wants to get it out there. Um, and I was talking to him about how to write his book. But again, he wants to get it out there for a whole different reason. It's not going to be his calling card. He thinks he can help other people who are going through the same journey he's going through. Right. Right. So wrapping up our 10th tip, what's the last one, Andy? The what last do you do once one you're done? is celebrate the launch. And we're going to do that. I'm, I'm doing that. So we have a few signings uh, underway uh, that we're scheduling. We're going to do one at the Levan Center for Innovation at Nova Southeastern University. And then we're going to do, we're, I'm going on tour in Florida at the end of February, early March. Uh, and we are going to go on tour and we're going to have book signings in each of our offices. And, um, and I'm sure, uh, hopefully you'll have your book by May. We mm -hmm. will bring our book, uh, to our 
conference and we'll have it available for people to grab as well. So yeah, yeah, that's that'll be super fun. And it, I mean, it is, it's a huge accomplishment. Even though we started the episode and saying it feels like everyone has a book now, still very few people actually do. It's a huge accomplishment to celebrate in your professional career, take some time to do it um, and, and celebrate and, and bring your, your community into it, whether it's through book signings. I'm actually taking the um, COVID, uh, COVID pandemic version of book signings. We're going to be doing virtual webinars and then sending out hard signed copies to everybody. So, you know, do what makes you happy and may, really take some time out and appreciate all the hard work and effort you've put in. Yeah, we're, we're going to do book signing and then we're going to give the money to charity. We're going to maybe charge uh, people to get the book and then we're going to give all the money to a local charity. So that's what how we're going to try to tie it in as uh, we go on our tour of Florida. So let's do this. Let's make sure that you and I have a book signing in Denver in May. We will definitely do that. So any of our listeners, um, you can find us at the IBBA conference first week of May. Um, actually, I think we've got maybe Randy's making a little pitch for the IBBA in this episode too. Yes. 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 So it'd be great. So, right. Yeah. So we will see any of the listeners there that want to be uh, seen and be with us and we'll do a book signing there. But before we jump into our interviews, Andy, tell everybody about your book and where they can find it. It is called Closing the Deal. I am holding it up if you're watching the video, but it's called Closing the Deal, a business owner's guide to avoiding pitfalls, dispelling myths, and selling your business the right way. And it is available on Amazon. You can grab it and uh, it's easy to buy. So, uh, and, and there's going to be ways on the T-World website, I'm sure that you could uh, get yourself a downloadable copy, but we'll work on that in a few. Yeah. And my book, it's funny, we wrote these books and we didn't really, we didn't work on them together, no. but they're kind of <laughs> companion books. So Andy's is about closing my, the deal. Mine is about getting ready for the sale before you're going to list your business. So mine's called getting the most for selling your business. And it focuses on the prep to sell process and what you can do one, two, three years ahead of a sale to get the most money for your business. I don't have an author copy yet. Mine's available March 15th. Um, but if you want to sign up and get an alert, you can go to jessicafiakovich.com backslash book, and you can get an alert when it's available. Excellent. Congratulations. You too. All right. Well, we've got two great interviews and some deals of the week and listings of the week as always. So let's jump into it. Let's do it. Transworld Business Advisors is the world's largest business brokerage and mergers and acquisitions firm with over 500 brokers in nearly 200 offices worldwide. Transworld's team handles thousands of business sales every year. To be connected with a qualified business broker or learn more about the buying and selling process, visit tworld.com forward slash the deal board or call 888-719-9098. Welcome back, everybody. And as you know, this week on the deal board, we're talking about what a book can do for your business and you personally, and kind of celebrating both mine and Andy's book launches that have happened in recent months. And I'm very excited to have two of my colleagues that have helped me along this process. I have Kevin Dom. Kevin is a media strategist, Inc. 500 CEO, award-winning and best-selling author. And I'm very excited to have my co-author and Mary Simonelli with me as well. Both of you, thank you so much for joining me today and welcome to the deal board. Happy to be here. Same. So I thought it'd be interesting if we could have a conversation just talking about the process we used uh, to get our book out. And But let's just start with like, why is it important for business owners to have a book or even should all business owners have a book at this point um, in our society and in our careers? Kevin, I guess I'll throw it to you first. Yeah, I, you know, there's there's three reasons, three good reasons to write a book, um, or or three primary reasons to write a book. Uh, one is a cathartic experience. Uh, you know, I just want to uh, get something out there, and I don't care who reads it. Um, two is to be a best selling author, and I can just tell you that is a just a horrible reason to want to write a book, <laughs> and your odds of getting there are pretty slim and none without spending a lot of money. But the third is to support your business and. A book's a fabulous media tool. It can be really useful. Um, the one thing it really doesn't do for most businesses is drive a lot of clients to your door. Uh, what the book does more than anything else is it takes all those things that you've been saying to your customers over and over again that they just don't seem to get because, you know, 
they they got so many things on their mind when they're talking about it. This gives them a chance to actually read that material in their own pace, at their own time, absorb it. And comprehension in a book is 80% generally compared with, you know, a speech that might be 10 or 20%. So this gives them a real opportunity to absorb that material. And, and it's a little known secret. If they've never met you, they don't have a specific person to associate the book with, they tend to hear it in their very own voice, which makes it more credible. So those are all good reasons uh, to do a book. If you can get one uh, done by uh, a, uh, if you can get one done by a by by a credible publisher, that helps a lot too with your credibility. And, and Mary and I had that experience with the Dummies books, uh, so it's been uh, it's been a good effect. But so those are good reasons uh, to to look at a book. But it's not for everybody. You have to look at your own marketing program and figure out if the effort is going to be worth the the, the benefits. Yeah, I, I I like how you explain it too, Kevin. I mean, having that additional explanation or educational piece, especially in businesses where, you know, like ours, it, it, there might be some complications during the process. It's a complicated process to explain. It's a good companion to speeches and stuff, but you're right. It's, it's a lot of work, um, even with the best team in the world, which we had on, on our book. Um, it takes a lot of effort and a lot of time to get done. So it isn't, it isn't the right fit for everyone. Um, yeah, go ahead, Gavin. One thing that we find is that uh, people think they have a book in them and they may organizing it and to actually get it so that it's then compelling to read. That's an entirely different process. And Anne Mary can speak to what she's got because she, she usually has to take the raw material and then, and then coordinate it into some sort of readable matter. Um, so she, she could certainly speak to, to that translation process. Yeah, I was going to ask Anne Mary, maybe we could um, use our process as an example, um, because I thought it worked really well. It's obviously my first book, right? But the organization process and how you took what was out of my head and we worked on it together, like, let's expand upon that a little bit, what that process looked like. You were a breeze, comparatively speaking. A lot of your materials, you had already taken the time to think out and organize and imagine how a reader would absorb some of this material and laid it out logically because of the way that you have developed your, um, your course. So some of that brain work had already been done for a lot of other entrepreneurs. It might not be quite as fleshed out already, both the content and the organization. And that is perhaps the most, it might not be the most labor, labor intensive part, but it is certainly up there. And if you don't put in that good work up front, the rest of the process is going to be unending and tedious. Yeah. Yeah. I liked uh, how we started off of like, just let's look at the bones of the book first, right? Like what are the major points that we want to get across? What are going to be the, the chapters or the major topics and organize it from there? What do you guys think? is like the major benefit of having, and Andy and I talked a lot about this in, in the intro, of have, like you have to have a team um, of professionals to help you go this go through this process. What do you think are like some of the biggest benefits of doing this with a team versus going in alone? Well, I think it depends on who the team is. Uh, you really? know, in, in our particular case, uh, one of the key points that we found and part of the reason it flows is because we were able to identify a particular strategy and point of view for the book. So what happens with a lot of books is that people just kind of dump out of their head and you know these books when you see them because they may, you know, they may have stories in them, they may have information in them, but they seem kind of a ramble. You know, people have just kind of dropped all of their thoughts in, in, in there. Um, when we worked with your book, we talked quite a bit before we ever got started in the writing process about giving it a particular point of view. Number one, what is the thing that makes you different in your business? What are the things that 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 have you stand out as that thought leader? Uh, number two, what's the strategy in regards to how is this book going to work as a tool within your business? And so if you understand those components, in your case, we wanted to address the emotion uh, of selling businesses, and we wanted to look at your process and make sure that this would guide uh, people coming through your process in a way that's consistent. Once you do that and set that out, then it becomes easier to be able to flow the material regardless of the capability of the, of, of, of the original source. The team that you may require, if, if, the, if the source is a writer rather than a speaker, then you may just need that person who can 
help to focus and to, to provide objectivity to get it on track. But if that person isn't one who's comfortable in doing that writing, then you need someone like Anne Mary who can actually flow that material uh, into good stories and ultimately um, edit it uh, to where it's there. I'm always the member of the team. And, and, and again, you might find a single ghostwriter that can do all these things. A lot of times, though, you, know, you, you can't find somebody who does all of it well. The strategy, the point of view, the material flow, uh, and then ultimately you need editors, because a lot of times the source feels that everything that in their head is important, and oftentimes you don't have the room for that, or 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 knowing where to put those things, or when you've been redundant, and so the ability to come back and look at that book objectively—that's one of the things that's beneficial with a team. If Anne Mary writes material, it's easy for me to come back and go, you know. That doesn't feel the same way, but if I've been writing the material, I'm so into it and, and every word is important. It's very difficult to, to have that level of objectivity and the teams can play off of each other in that way. Yeah. And I think when the teams work really well, like we, like we saw, you know, the three of us working on the book and revising it and editing it, then we, we did go the, the regular publishing route, which we'll talk about in a minute. But when we delivered it to the publisher, it was a, a relatively clean manuscript, right? So we didn't have to go back and forth with the publisher quite a few times. And which I imagine some books, they, they do go back and forth quite a few times. I don't know what that experience is like, but I, I felt like it flowed a lot better because we had three sets of eyes coming from three different perspectives um, on the book and the manuscript. Having done uh, now seven, seven or eight books that I've worked on and or, and or written, and I've always had uh, co-authors with me that the, the wonderful thing about a book is that it's a very collaborative pri- process. It's not, you know, you or me. It's like, well, it's better with you and me, right? So uh, um, the, the, the thing that helps is understanding what the publisher is looking for and looking at that process as it relates. It's not very different from uh, the way that um, th- that you guys package deals for buyers. If you understand what the buyer is looking for in the business, then you can help to package it their way and that makes it a smooth transaction. That's the same with us. This is the uh, second book that Anne Mary and I have done with this publisher. Uh, we understand where they're at, what they're looking for. Um, first one wasn't quite as smooth, right, Anne Mary? <laughs> But, but that's also a bit where um, working with, with good ghostwriters will help you because they actually understand what the publishers are looking for and, and how that works, and they can systemize it. It's just like, for you, the author, this may be the only book you ever do. And so you don't need that practice of being able to put that together and understanding what they're looking for. By the time you get to three or four, I like to say first time's a fluke, second time's a coincidence, third time's a trend. So by the time you get through your your third process, um, it gets easier. I don't know, Anna Mary, did you, you've now been through this several times. What, I think what do you that's mean? true. I think that's definitely true. And Mary, why don't, um, I think one of the other benefits of, the, of working in this team environment for me as the author is I'm, you had a great, way of, of, like I said, mentioned pulling things out of my head, but also it, it was felt like I was talking to my audience during our cause too. So maybe talk a little bit about that of like, you know, yeah, we had some of the content laid out, but when we're getting the stories and refining the points we're trying to make, what are you looking for, um, out of the author when you're doing some of those, we did audio interviews and I'm sure there's other ways to do it, but what, what are those points you're looking for? I always try to remember that the author is writing for people that don't know the information. And as I am happily ignorant on many of these things. So for me, it was easy to put myself in their shoes of, okay, I'm hearing this for the first time. What is it that I understand that she's saying? Are there phrases or words or concepts that that she is referencing that for her is second nature, but for me is brand new? And also, does it make sense with what we just talked about? And with what I know we're about to talk about. So it, I think that as, as you and Kevin has discuss, have discussed, that fresh set of eyes is very important. Um, and I think that it, it also helps, um, this is why we're editing. Yep, that's fine. <laughs> uh, I think it also helps me capture the emotion listening to you and and hearing the way that you tell the stories 
and then also processing them myself. It, it really helped me capture some of the feelings that you experienced as the broker and that some of your clients experienced as the owners. And that came through a lot in the book, I think, helping. Uh, and I think there are some really valuable lessons in those. We, we, we have a little technique that we developed, and Mary and I, when we worked on the Brady book, and uh, it was one of our, our earlier projects um, uh, about success lessons from Tom Brady. And I'm not a real sports nut, and Mary is, so she, she really contributed a lot to that book. The challenge was in determining who was the audience. And when Anne Mary was figuring out the voice of that book, uh, we, we ended up deciding on picking a persona. I said to, her, to Anne Mary, I'm like, who do you know that would really enjoy this book that, that is a person that you actually know in your life? And she picked, uh, I believe they were nieces, uh, and and they became they became the the person in in their mind that she was telling the stories to, and if she could make Tom Brady interesting to them, you know, then then she could make it interesting to anybody. And it works the same if if you hire a ghostwriter, introduce them to the ideal client that that you're writing it for. Give them a person they can they can actually put their head around that they know, or find help them find somebody that they know that fits the. The, the stereotypical buyer of the book, and then they can do their their writing and their storytelling to that person. I, I don't know, Mary, it would seem to be helpful for you. Yeah, absolutely. I love that strategy. And I know you had somebody in mind, I think that you were writing our book for too. So that we talked about a couple of times, but yeah. I love that strategy. So, hey, I've got a tactical question. What I like, what are actually the types of help out there for business owners that want to become an author? Like we've talked about ghostwriter a little bit. Maybe we'll expand upon like what a ghostwriter does. And then if you're looking for other members of a team, like who else would you add to that team? Well, the, the, the challenge for, for business authors is they, there are way too many resources now. Um, it, the, doing the book business is a book business and you, there are lots of pay to play uh, companies that will charge you lots of money to get your book done with little concern for whether or not it's a good book or it's a good selling book. Um, there are companies that are, are just purely focused uh, on letting you get it all out of your head, which are great, by the way, for cathartic books. You know, if if you just got to get it out, you know, you can go to a Create Space or a Scribe or or these companies and and you know pay your fee and 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 off it'll go. Um, I think the challenge is the dynamic because there's been such a, a flood of books in the marketplace, real marketing for the books, you, you just have to set your expectations. Um, on, a, on an actual book sales basis, most self-published books don't do more than 100 copies. And, uh, and, and also to understand that, that realistically, most business books, like a really successful business book is 10,000 copies. And so these copies that, you know, these books that we know by authors like Seth Godin and Jim Collins, you know, those are huge anomalies that aren't likely to happen. So once you put that in place, um, then when you know the audience, then the, the real people that you need are the people who can help you get the information to that audience. There's no one specific you know, book marketer or PR person or uh, that, that you need on board. Treat it as the business strategy. How would you market this and how would you use this in your marketplace? And if you're the kind of business that already has a, a, a stable constituency, then the, probably the really the only one you need is yourself. You just need to make the time to actually do the work to get the book out there or and use it for the tool. I mean, you know, get it, get your sales force to use it if that's what's going to help uh, the situation. Yeah, I think that put it into a lot of perspective for me, Kevin, when we started talking about numbers, especially in a business category, which is the audience we're talking to now, is, you know, most business books, almost all business books are not going to become New York Times bestsellers, just not likely to happen, right? And that you have to have a whole other marketing strategy, of the purpose of this book into your sales strategy, not just you're not going to get rich and famous off your business book, right? <laughs> no, I, we, we can both attest to that, Anne Mary and I, despite our bestseller status. <laughs> <laughs> to, to apply perhaps the most important lesson from the book, you have to divorce the emotion from it. You need to look at it tactically. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. Yeah. That's a really good point. And we do, we, we use, uh, we use a, a lot of analogies in, in this book too, about your business being your baby and things like that. Um, one other thing I want to address, and I'm going to throw this at you guys without being prepared, but I know you know a lot about it. Um, there's a lot of discussion about self-publishing versus going the traditional publishing route. What are your opinions on is one better than the other? Or does it really depend on the author? It, it depends mostly upon, uh, the goals of the book and, uh, and your financing capability, uh, and, um, the marketability of the book. So he, here, he, here's essentially how it works. If you already have a built-in audience and you have the capability to distribute, um, then you're going to be fine by self-publishing the book. If you know, if you can move 500 to a thousand a year, uh, you'll make a little more. And by the way, in combination with, if, if you self-publish, you might make a little more money. But again, a thousand books, okay, great. You know, if you made an extra five bucks a book, it's five thousand dollars. You have to look at the at the structure of your business and 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 is it worth your time and your energy? Um, what a what a trade publisher brings to the table right off the bat is credibility. Uh, now, in order to get a trade publisher deal, you've got to have a sizable market. You probably have to have a sizable uh, mailing list yourself because the trade publisher doesn't want to invest in you unless they think they're going to sell at least 10,000 copies because it's not worth it to them. They're just going to lose money. And anybody who thinks that the trade publisher is going to market the book for you is absolutely wrong. All they're going to do is call their sales reps and say, hey, we have a book coming out. You can put it in the bookstores. But that does not market the book. And, and, and so you have that responsibility on yourself. If the book just if, if the book's benefit comes to you strictly from getting it into the hands of your own people, uh, your own clients, your own prospects, again, self-publishing might be the option. Um, but if it really has legs, if it really has some has a reason uh, that that people will that that it'll spread, you know, to ten thousand people or more, the benefit of the trade publishing is is that you have credibility. Isn't it nicer to have a Skyhorse brand and a Simon and Schuster uh, distribution to say, look, this is a really credible author versus if you have a, a pay to play that everybody knows that you just bought your way into the book? It's a difference in the credibility. So. It, it, it's a tough choice. Um, I find that most, not all, most self-published books are um, really because they couldn't find the path to that trade published author. And um, with a few exceptions where they make so much money, a Travis Bradbury, a, a Vern Harnish, um, they know they're going to sell tens of thousands of books no matter what. And therefore, they would be just giving away money to the publisher under that under that circumstance. Yeah. It's, it's a really, uh, it's a really interesting conversation, a big one in the business world, just because writing a book uh, for business owners and entrepreneurs has become such a popped popular marketing tactic and there's pros and cons to both. And, you know, we did, we did uh, decide to partner with Skyhorse, which I thought was the right decision for our book. And he decided to self-publish, which is, I think the right decision for his book, you know, but there's pros and cons to both. And I think um, it's, it, like you said, it's, it's about the goals, right, Kevin? So well, you have to remember strategy. what's your, yeah. Where, what's your primary business? Are you looking to be an author and uh, as your primary business? And if you are, well, then, you know, self-publishing might be the way for you, but you got to be a marketer as well. And, uh, and, but if you're looking for credibility in the field, Hey, sometimes it's best to leave that to, to an outsourced partner. And if they have good credibility and you could build off that brand, that's great. I mean, I will say if you can get a brand like dummies and, and I have three dummies books, um, and Mary now has one, uh, that's a brand that can do more for your business. Does it, are you going to get rich off of it? No. We, we have a best-selling dummies book. Uh, I have one that's done 70,000 copies. You know, that's $70,000 in royalties over the course of 17 years. Who cares? Doesn't, you know, even make my car payment, right? So, <laughs> so, so ultimately, you know, you, you really have to, 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 to treat it like any other business marketing proposition. And then, you know, do your, do your cause effect and risk reward and, and make the decision accordingly. It's really interesting. Like you said at the beginning, it's a business. It's the book business now. And uh, a lot has changed in the last 10 years, I can assume. 
But another day, another topic, we'll dive into that business model at some point, I'm sure. So um, before we wrap up, I'd love to go to each of you and just give some tips for business owners that are considering entering this space. They're, they're, they have a book, whether it's the cathartic book or whether it's um, a help book for their clients, what would be your tips for how to move forward with that, those first few decisions? And Anne Mary, I'll throw it to you first. For me, your table of contents is your Bible. If, if you can put together an organized, cohesive, uh, thorough table of contents, that is your ticket to a successful book, however it is that you define success. One of the things that you did very well was you turned to some of your colleagues and your trusted mentors and you let them see the table of contents and you ask for their feedback. And, and we made some changes in response to that. Uh, we also gave them a sample chapter to read, which is maybe a little further down the road from just your table of contents, but your network can be really valuable in giving you some idea of whether you're headed in the right direction. I love that the network. And, and we gave it to some like potential audience members too, right? So it makes sure we were going the right direction. They understood what we're talking about. Kevin, what would be your your first few tips? Yeah, so I have a couple. Um, the first is 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 if you're not already, start blogging. And the reason I say start blogging is it's a way for you, even if you don't post them, by the way, it's a way for you to start assessing your capability and your desire uh, to to write and organize. You're, it's going to give you an idea of how you can start, how you'll be able to contribute to the process and what's going to be useful for you. Can you write it? Do you enjoy writing? Do you need a ghostwriter? Uh, can you organize your thoughts in, in a way? And, and part of the way that, that you can start that blogging, and this goes to the second tip, is uh, look for the things in your marketing program that uh, I like to say that irk you, uh, IRC. So what are the what's the communication that you're using in your sales process that is inconsistent? Uh, everybody's saying something different. What are you having happen in your sales process communication that is redundant? Uh, you're saying the same things over again and you're repeating yourself constantly. See what I did there. And then the third, uh, th that was purely for Anne Mary's benefit. And then the <laughs> third, the third one is what are you saying that's confusing? Uh, so, so inconsistent, redundant, and confusing, confusing being your people keep saying it, they're saying it the same way. And yet somehow people just aren't getting it. Start by making, as, as Anne Mary pointed out, a, a table of contents, list out all the things that you would put in that book that solves those three issues. And then you can start on that blogging process. And if you think by the time you're done, you've got, you know, maybe 30, 40 blogs, you may very well have a book. Otherwise, just blog it, post it, and you've got 30, 40 things that you can send out to your people and give them as tools to, to take them down the path. That's awesome. I love that. IRC. I -R -C. So um, we're going to wrap up first, but I, I'd love to know um, if someone wants to talk to either of you about hashing out a book topic or potentially working together, how, how is the best way for them to contact? They, they should go to the website, stopboringus.com, stopboringus.com. And they should read through it thoroughly. Uh, there's information down at the bottom and uh, you'll be able to reach us through there. You might even learn something along the way. Awesome. And our book and Mary and myself's book is coming out on March 15th. There's, so just a couple weeks away. It's called Getting the Most for Selling Your Business. It'll be available on Amazon. We'll drop the links into the podcast notes too, so everybody can grab a copy of that. And Mary, Kevin, thank you both for joining me in the show. Thank you guys for helping me through the process. I know we'll be doing it again, um, not very shortly, but soon enough. Truly our pleasure. Thanks, Jessica. Hey, Andy, do you know what time it is? It's time for our deal of the week. Deal of the week. Sold. Hey, we're back, and it is Deal of the Week, and I have Robert Cuno here from Transworld Business Advisors of San Diego, and we sell a lot of medical businesses, and Robert has a great example of another medical business that Transworld sold. Robert, why don't you tell us about it? Yeah, uh, this particular business, you know, is a, is a mental health uh, counseling business, uh, and, you know, with all the 
unfortunate situations going on with COVID, et cetera. Um, it's actually a business that um, there was a lot of buyer interest in. Uh, and and what's hap- what we're seeing now happening in the, uh, in the industry is um, larger um, type, uh, s- similar type businesses are looking for strategic acquisitions for smaller. Um, so this, um, this particular business uh, was a... Um, business plus real estate opportunity uh, combined uh, was uh, in approximately five hundred thousand dollars in value. Uh, but what what we found was a strategic buyer that was uh, looking to uh, bring that into the fold uh, to to increase the size of their current op- operations. Sounds like a great deal. If anybody in Southern California wants to learn more or have a, has a similar business to sell, how best to get in touch with you? Yeah, contact me at uh, uh, either by phone, 619-538-2942, or RM Cunio, that's Robert Michael Cunio, C-U-N-I-O, at tworld.com. Thank you. Thank you so much, Robert. Thank you. Everybody, welcome back to the deal board. And we have a very special guest, someone that I have spent a lot of time with lately, which is great. We have Bruce Chorus from BMD Publishing. And I want him to talk about, you know, who he is. So we're talking about writing books today. I wrote my book, Closing the Deal. Bruce did a great job of helping me get that over the finish line, which we which we'll talk about. But you know, Bruce, welcome. And why don't you give a little introduction about for yourself first so we can kind of kick this off. Great. Well, thanks for having me, Andy. Um, as you mentioned, I'm the, I'm the president of BMD Publishing. That's the publishing division of our marketing company, which is Market Domination LLC. So we're a direct response marketing company. We do funnels. We do social media advertising. You name it, we do it. And several years ago, more than a few years ago, we started doing books for our clients. And a book is really the ultimate business card uh, because if you can sit there and say, you know, I happen to be the owner of this really successful uh, business brokerage company, and here's my book about how to get the most when you sell your business. You've just given yourself great added value. It's, it really is the ultimate business card. So we started doing books for our clients a number of years ago. And then we branched out and added podcasts to it as well. So now um, our signature product, we call it Dream 50, and it's a year's worth, 50 interviews, where people, our clients do 50 or so podcast interviews, and then the best 12 or so of them turn into a, into a book. We still do just books for clients, and we do them in a lot of different ways. Uh, I tend to be, I'm the book guy. Uh, so my background is prior to coming over to marketing, I was a journalist. I worked in television news for about 25 years as a producer and then a manager. And so I've got the interviewing side of it pretty well down pat. And so when we do our books, which are interview books, I'm the one who coaches our clients on how to do the interviews. And then when the book is ready to be published, I'm the one who uh, edits it and goes through everything. Um, And in your case, um, I'll, I'll share a little bit. I'll do a little show and tell. This is, this is still the author, the proof copy. We haven't gotten the official copy. There we go. Haven't gotten the official copy yet because we just had Andy's launch last week. But Andy came to me and said, I've started writing this book and I, I need help finishing it. And I said, okay, let me take a look at it. And there wasn't enough there for, for to finish a book. And we could have done a couple of different things. You could have sat back down at your computer and write, written five, six, seven more chapters, which would have taken you a while. Or in your case, what we did is we came up with a hybrid. And I said, let's take your content. And why don't we interview five, six, seven people that fit under this umbrella? And uh, obviously, you being a very, very busy man, I did the interviews for you, which I was happy to do. And then so your book became kind of a hybrid. Uh, You wrote some stuff. I did some interviews. And it all came together in really fast time. When you came to us, it was we started working on you the beginning of September. And last week, which was the, what, the third week in January, we had your launch. So it moved along really fast. Yeah, it was great. I, I really appreciated the, the process. So how typical is that process? I mean, when, all, you know, it seems that, you know, everybody has a big barrier. Like it's a, it's a huge thing to write a book. Right? And, and, and it, you just told me another way that you do bo- write books is that you help people do 50 podcast interviews and then put together a book. That sounds wonderful. I mean, 
you know, with today with technology, there's so many ways to probably gather information than just pounding out on a keyboard. Yeah. Well, our, our slogan is BMD publishing. We, you know, you write a book without writing a book and that's, that's why it has become our signature product. In fact, a little history here. Um, I first met Andy because Andy had been interviewed for another client's book. And then a, a, an additional client said, I need a business broker for my client. I said, I know a guy. <laughs> and that's the beauty of, of, a, of an interview book, whereas you've got 10, 12, 14 other people in it. And it's not just you telling your story. It's not just you sharing your information. More important, it's not just you promoting the book. Because let's face it, business people don't do books to become a New York Times bestseller and retire to Tahiti on the, on the royalties. Business people do books to get business. And we look at these books as a very, very effective lead generation tool. Um, whether that's the people that you want to interview becoming referral sources for you and, and you build relationships with them. Or once the book comes out, they're going to help you promote it because now you're not just the guy that wrote the book. They're the expert in such and such who's in a book. Uh, for example, if we do a book for a financial advisor who is his niche market is retirement planning, he could write a book about retirement planning. Nothing wrong with that, but it would take him a long time to do. And it would just be him sharing his expertise. But if on the other hand, he interviewed uh, estate planning attorneys tax attorneys, elder care attorneys, family law attorneys, CPAs, uh, all the people that would touch people who are approaching or in retirement. We've done books like that where they've interviewed funeral directors to talk about the benefit of, of free planning. We've talked to people uh, from senior, active senior living developments in neighborhoods and communities. We've interviewed realtors because what do you do when you retire? You're going to sell the four bedroom house and buy a condo by the beach. We've interviewed travel agents. We've interviewed boat dealers. Um, you name it. It's been, it, 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 we've kind of put together, it's one, it becomes one-stop shopping. So it certainly sounds like the goal and what, what one of my goals is, I believe that an educated consumer is our best customer, kind of like the Cy Sims. You and Cy Sims. <laughs> right. And I, I think that's so true. I mean, I want my, my customers to be, to be able to make an informed choice not only about choosing us as mm -hmm. a as a broker, but really about choosing their opportunity uh, when it comes time to sell. Because a lot of times, you know, what gets into their head is, you know, what the value should be. And, and it's very confusing. And I would imagine that's the case. You just mentioned two things that are super confusing, buying a boat and 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 tax and uh, estate planning and mm -hmm. you know your funeral arrangements, things that have all kinds of questions. And I would imagine a book would be a great way to, you know, show your customer you actually care. Sure. And what you're doing, which is nice, is you're giving them information. Your book is not a sales tool. Yes, in in your case, for example, I mean, there's a a chapter about you, who's Andy and all of that, and the book reinforces Andy Cagnetta and Transworld Business Advisors. It absolutely does. But when you've got chapters which, which have interviews with um, a business attorney, you've got interviews with someone regarding commercial uh, real estate, you've got interviews with someone regarding and having a good exit plan, you've got interviews with someone regarding do, do your due diligence. So this is informational, and yes, that's why business people should do them is to, you want to reinforce your own value. That's a given. You're not going to do a book and have it be, well, here's just information on how to sell your business. And by the way, you shouldn't talk to me. Of course, you're going to, it's your book. You want people to, to read this and say, well, I want to know more about this guy. I want to talk to this guy and, and be grateful for the information that you've given them because it is, it, is it a sales tool? Yes. But I look at it as more, it's lead generation than a sales tool and it's informational. You're giving people value. Yeah, I, well, I figured, you know, after 25 years of doing this, I had something to say and I wanted to put it in a place where I can easily access and give it to people. So a right. book was kind of just, you know, it was almost a necessity. I mean, people were looking at me uh, for the last several years saying, you haven't written a book yet? 
you haven't written a book yet. So I would imagine there's a lot of people out there that should write a book. Uh, and certainly, you know, if they've been in their in their industry for a long time and they they have opinions and they have valuable information, they should well, they have gather. knowledge. They have right. tremendous knowledge. But it's so it it is an intimidating thought because when you say I'm gonna write a book, you're picturing yourself sitting down at your computer for an hour every night for six months. So you finally have enough stuff. First of all, you shouldn't sit at your computer and do it. Little hint, you should use your voice recorder and dictate your thoughts and get it transcribed. It's much, and it's much easier that way. Have your list of questions, ask yourself, a interview yourself, ask yourself a question, answer it, use my recorder. I don't have it handy, but use, use your little digital recorder or use the app on your computer or on your phone, whatever and then get it to a transcription service. They're not expensive, but you don't want to sit at your computer hour after hour after hour writing your, your book. You'll never get it done that way. Yeah, I, I, I certainly, that's the way I did it. So I <laughs> sat in front of my, in front of my computer for days and days. I kind of made the outline and, and there's no one approach I would imagine to writing yep. a book, but it is about dumping that information. And I will give everybody a hint that, uh, uh, that, you know, it is just better to dump all the information because even after I thought I had it all organized in a, in a strategic kind of way, you know, you came in as a professional and said, no, no, not that way. <laughs> We're going to do it a different way. We're going to move these around a little bit. Yeah. Right. But it was, it, you know, it was great for an outsider to kind of look at it. And I guess that's part of your service as well is that mm -hmm. you have the ability uh, to look at these things objectively. And of course, you have the ability that you've done this before and you know kind of what sells. Not, again, not that you're going to become a New York Times bestselling author with these things, but it's going to be an amazing calling card. Right. So for example, you know, in, in your case, your book can be used a couple of different ways. You could do a, a marketing funnel that says, are you ready to, to sell your business? Are you thinking about selling your business? Come in and meet with the Transworld Business Advisor expert in your area. And just for coming in for the consult, you'll get a free copy of our Amazon bestseller, Closing the Deal. Right. And it's an incentive to get them in the door. Uh, it's also a, we've done book funnels where people, and you see it all the time, free plus shipping, whatever the case may be. Right. And you get the book first, and then that drives you to do the next step. People use books to get them in the door for a consult. They use books to sell products. They use books to sell coaching programs. They use books to sell their own services. It's a, it, a book can sell a lot of different things while still being an informational tool. Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna use my book. We've already kind of uh, planned out as some book signings. And, and by book signings, you know, we're always looking to get the referral sources we have in our world, the CPAs, the, the attorneys, the bankers, to come by trans world. We have cocktail parties every once in a while. We've had, we had our 40th anniversary party a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. right before the pandemic. And mm -hmm. so this time we're going to go on the road and we're just going to go to each office that we have here in Florida. And I might do some nationally as well. And we'll drag a bunch of books with us. We won't have to drag them. We can order copies online and have them shipped there. And we'll, you know, sign some books and have a good time. So we're looking well, forward you, to that. You mentioned, take, you know, you'll take copies with you. That's something that people need to know is, you know, in the old days, you, you did your book and you went to a publishing company and they charged you an arm and a leg, and then you could only order copies through them and all of that. We publish our books through Kindle, and we publish um, a six by nine paperback, and we also publish a Kindle ebook. And when it's time, we're, we're very careful with how we do the books. Uh, we make the interiors black and white, which keeps the cost per copy down uh, so that we can get a very low per copy author price, plus shipping, of course, and the way Amazon works, it's great. If you order one book, you're going to pay a certain amount for shipping. If you order 10, the cost per book drops. You get to 25 copies, the cost per book drops. The sweet spot I've found seems to be about 50. So if you order 50 or more, your cost per book for shipping is dirt cheap. Yeah, it's been, it's, it, 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 it's pretty inexpensive. I think it's about three bucks a book so far. So not including yeah. shipping. So right. 
Um, and we've had clients that have used those books just like you've done it. We've had Pete Brooks authors that have done seminars and workshops and have handed them out there. We've done, we've had clients where they've said, you know, they, they're very active in causes. You are as well. You do your big fundraiser every year. Right. So we've had clients that say, look, if I do sell books, I'm going to give the proceeds to this charity. I, and they might even do a charitable event with it, which is something, you know, that you and do. we decided the same thing. If people come, we're going to give them a signed book and we'll charge them. And then we're going to give the money to charity. The money goes so. to a very, yeah, absolutely. Because yeah, so. like I said, you know, if, if, you know, our books are, you know, listed at maybe fourteen ninety nine. It's funny. I'll do a little quick comparison here just to give you an idea, a different mindset. Here are two insurance guys. They both were all about protecting yourself, right? So John, his is protecting your future, very warm and, you know, tranquil. He's got a couple sitting there on a beach. By the way, he's in St. Louis. There are no beaches in St. Louis, but he wanted right. a beach scene. But his was very warm and fuzzy. And Steve was very dark and foreboding, you know, keeping what's yours and the guy with the umbrella and the threatening sky. So they, they similar books, similar interviews, but they took a completely different approach when it came time for, wow. for titling it. Well, um, it, no, that's great. That's great. I mean, I, I, I think what I always advocate in my life, which I've talked about before, of course, with Trans World, is you need an expert by your side if you do anything. And yep. certainly writing a book, it's a lot easier. I should have called you earlier, but I'm glad <laughs> Steve Eschbach was, from Trans World Business Advisors was your other client. I have no problem promoting his book as well. Um, and, you know, and that's what we do. I mean, we, we're here to help people sell their businesses, but you're here to help promote them and get them a great calling card, like a book. So right. what's the best way to get in touch with you if somebody wants to learn more? Well, uh, they can shoot me an email. Uh, my email is bruce at marketdominationllc.com. Uh, they can go to our website to learn more about us, which is marketdominationllc.com. Dot com And there's a link at the top for BMD Publishing, which will take them to the, the podcast and book page. Um, and people don't have to do a podcast. They can just do a book. They can do a, a book that's got, you know, 12 interviews. They can do a book where um, we, we've done books with people where they found all their own guests. So we don't have to do the research and find them the guest. That's what you did. You provided. You said, right. I want to interview these people. Uh, so, but we've also done books with people who they don't know who to look for. And, or, and so we've done the research, we found them the guests and all of that. We've done books where I've had to do the interviews for the client. We've done the books where they've done their own. We've done books that have been a hybrid like yours of content and interviews. And then we've also, we, we've done books. We're currently doing a couple where it's, it's a more complicated process and it's more, more work on our part. So we charge more, but where I interview the client. And then take all these interviews and turn it into chapters. Yeah. That's obviously more money to do because sure. it's more work on our part. But it doesn't have to be a huge, um, a huge undertaking. Uh, right. It really can be done quickly, relatively quickly, and and painlessly. If you're if you're if you can spare a half hour a week, you can do interviews. It's a, it's a, it's an amazing process. You were very efficient in getting mine done. I want to thank you for that. We will put all your information in our show notes and get that out there. And of course, everybody can watch out on social media for uh, links to Bruce. Bruce, thank you so much for coming in and thank you for getting my closing the deal. I was just <laughs> going for it as myself. Closing the deal book done. Really appreciate everything you did. It was my pleasure, Andy. Thanks for having me. Hey, Jessica, you know what time it is? Money time? Almost. It's time for Listing of the Week. Hey, we're back. And yes, it's Listing of the Week. And I have Chris Canwell from Trans World Business Advisors of... Colorado. Oh, we're talking about Colorado we're now. Colorado Actually, now. we're going to Colorado and you got a great listing. I do. It's in the pool, spa, swim spa industry, multi-location, five locations, doing $12 million a year in revenue. Business has been great the last few years, and the projections for the business continues to be stronger. They've got great brands. They're tied into the communities, and they've been around for 35 years. Wow, sounds like a great deal. It's amazing business. Cash flow is a little over a million dollars a year. If you've got any interest, reach out to me. All right. What's the best way to get in touch with you? Ccantwell at tworld.com. All right. Get in touch with Chris Cantwell. Thanks, Chris. 
Thanks, Andy. Hey, welcome back, everybody, to the podcast. And we do have a special guest, a returning guest, Randy Bring, Trans World Business Advisors here in Florida. But this year, better known as the International Business Brokers Association Chairman. And so congratulations, Randy. It's a huge honor. I know you've been on the board for several years now, and they've now raised you up the chairman. It's a little bit different being chairman. And uh, so congratulations. Thank you, Andy. And, and you're absolutely right. It, it is a little it is a little different being being chairman, but it is a position that I've looked forward to and and uh, one that comes with uh, quite a bit of responsibility. I'm absolutely honored and, and privileged. And quite frankly, I'm humbled uh, to have the position considering the, the quality of the people that I get to work with uh, on my board and, and in the, the association itself. Yeah, it's great. I mean, listen, we share in the, in the, in the wish to serve our, our communities and not only our communities where we live, but where we work. And, you know, we have a long history of giving back to the IBBA. I happen to have been chair once upon a time myself. Uh, we've had other people who have been with Transworld at times to be chairman. And now you are a, a chair again. And we we love serving our industry. I think it's important. And I think it's important to hold those kind of positions. And, you know, thank you for stepping up again. Thanks, Andy. I, I think that mindset of, of wanting to give back, look, we all give back to our communities, but, but wanting to give back to our industry is one that uh, not, is not exclusive to trans world, but I think is uniquely held by so many uh, members of the trans world organization, whether here in Florida or around the country. And um, it, it's so incredibly important uh, that we that we do give back and uh, we give of the time. Um, it doesn't come without its 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 privileges. I mean, we give and 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 we get to learn and we get to meet. We get to network with with business brokers from all over the country, all over the world. So it goes both ways. But um, it's a very very important part of what we do at Transworld. And speaking of important part networking, we are getting together in May. Can't wait. So the, uh, uh, of course, the IBBA conference, uh, May 6th and 7th, uh, this year in beautiful Denver, a city that I, I've been all over the country, I've been all over the world. I have never, ever been really? to Denver. And I understand it's absolutely beautiful in, uh, in May. So the IBBA conference, Andy, as you know, piggybacks, uh, right immediately following the two-day Transworld Conference, May 4th and, and May 5th. Same hotel, same property. You never have to unpack your suitcase. And we are hoping this year and, and, and getting a positive response that, that many of our uh, members of the Transworld team who are attending the first two-day conference at Transworld will stay aboard and stay over and enjoy an, an amazing, powerful, two-day IBBA conference. Well, to all of our Transworld family who are listening to this podcast, yes, we will be in Denver for the 4th and the 5th for the Transworld conference. We'll be sticking around for the 6th and 7th for the IBBA conference. Several of us will stay for the M&A conference too. But I will promise you one thing. Uh, since it is the home of one Jessica Fiakovich, who is my partner here at the Deal Board podcast, she and I will no doubt be uh, having live sessions of this podcast there. So to everyone who's listening, who's coming to the conference, and you want to get here on this podcast, we'll be interviewing a bunch of people. We probably won't be interviewing you because you you're going to be a little busy. It'll be a busy couple of days for me, but but uh, uh, grab me and you know that I'll be available. Uh, I can't wait to see everybody out there. This is a, a must a must attend event, not only to to meet and connect with all the trans world people that maybe only uh, talk to on a Zoom call or email, but it's really 
uh, for that four day period between the IBBA and the Trans World Conference, it is the greatest assemblage of business brokers in the world, all under one roof, all connecting with each other, all learning from each other, and all getting better at what we do. So it, it, it's a must. It's a must attend event. It's a must attend and looking forward to seeing you there again. Randy, congratulations on becoming the chairman of the IBBA. There's not too many of them out there and uh, you are indeed worthy of that uh, after all you've given to the organization and to our business over the years. So again, congratulations. Andy, thank you very, very much. I look forward to the, to the privilege of serving for 2020. Thanks for tuning into the show today. If you like the podcast, share it with your friends on social media. And don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review on your favorite podcasting app. If you have questions, would like to appear, or have suggestions for topics for the show, get in contact with us through our website, thedealboardpodcast.com. 